The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Welcome to my show. Today's special guest on Zoom is Heather Bishop. She's a magician and a singer, songwriter. She also is part of a, a keynote speaker, visual artist, published author, educator, and tradeswoman, and social activist. Well, we're going to talk about the music part of you, girl. Mm -hmm. You're best known for being a very talented and respected uh, musician. I understand your voice is beautiful. I have heard it, and it's wonderful. Thank you for being on my show. It's great to be an honor to have you here. Thank you. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Saskatchewan, uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. That's that you, you're a Canadian, you know that. And so that's just north of Montana. My dad was born in Montreal. My mom was born in uh, Germany, but she came over to Swift Current. Okay. With her dad and mom and sister. While growing up, singers, who influenced you the most? A cat. Um, oh, this is one of four. Beautiful. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. This is Winkin. <laughs> uh oh, it says not already. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sounds like anger. Sorry, what was the question? My cat just interrupted. Oh, <laughs> I don't mind. Me? Yeah. Um, we'll put her name uh, on in the credits. Oh, okay. Um, like you, Patty, uh, uh, I'm sure, when I grew up, when I got, I, I was probably, I'm going to say six or seven when I got my first record, like even a record player was quite an amazing thing. And uh, the first record I ever got was the Chipmunks, <laughs> which was a, a speeded up version of some guy singing a song. And so it sounded like Chipmunks. But I was enthralled with that. Now, when I got into music, and I just kind of loved all music. And in fact, um, when I was four or five, my parents took me somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but they had a player piano, the pumper kind, you know. So I sat down at this piano and I could just reach the pumper pedals. And I started <laughs> pumping it and I could see, you know, and then the keys move without you touching them. This was magic. So I begged my parents and started taking piano lessons right after that and you know did all the you know the grand old duke of york and all that kind of stuff and then when i became a teenager um that was in the 60s and all my friends were listening to the beatles and and whatnot but i found buffy saint marie and i found nina simone and i found ma rainey and uh bessie smith and so i got myself steeped in uh the whole history and culture of women in music, if you will. That's cool. I love Canadian singers, eh? I have Buffy's, one of Buffy's uh, books. Have you read that one yet? Uh, no, I haven't. It's a very good one. It's just recently. Oh, excellent. <clears throat> She's not watched that. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, the music that you got. Yeah, and I've, I've had the I'm sorry, I was going to say I've had the privilege uh, many times of working with Buffy and, and you know, who'd have thought when I started my career that I would get to, um, to meet a, a real idol. I've always wanted to interview her for the last 11 years. She's a toughie to get a hold of her. Yeah, she's, she's so busy, so busy, and she's just a phenomenal, phenomenal talent. And she's 80? Yeah, she's got to be. I'm 72, so she's... 
She's Happy late birthday. 70s anyway. I forgot your birthday. Happy birthday, little lady. Oh, thank you. So where'd you learn about the mechanics of music? University, college, high school? Well, well you know, um, I started on the piano at five, as I, as I was saying. And, uh, and so, um, and, and thankfully for me, my parents who, who didn't have any money came up with, a, I think it was a dollar and a quarter a week or something to go and take my lessons. And, and I'm so grateful because that really grounded me in music theory. And, and so I developed a whole uh, approach to the skill set around making music that has uh, stood me in good stead my whole career. And so from there, um, as I said, when I turned into uh, a teenager in the 60s, it was all about folk music. So um, I can remember uh, practicing, at my, my first instrument was the banjo ukulele and practicing <laughs> in the back of the car while we drive somewhere, driving my parents and my brothers crazy. But so I moved to stringed instruments and eventually got to um, the guitar. And uh, for guitar, I have to say that uh, mostly in my career, I've looked for, and this is the advice I give my students. <clears throat> I look for musicians that I really admire. And if I see a guitar player, and when I would be playing festivals, Festivals. If I see a guitar play, go up, introduce myself and say, can you show me how you did that? So guitar, I really organically um, went to people that were doing stuff I wanted to learn. When it came to the voice, thankfully for me, very early in my career, uh, the guy who ran the Winnipeg Folk Festival, Mitch Bedalik, mm -hmm. he, uh, he asked me to audition for the Folk Festival and I did. And he came to my house actually, and, and I'm also a visual artist. And he looked at all my paintings and he said, nah, he said, you should be a visual artist, never mind uh, singing. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but I really want to be a musician. So he said, okay, if you're going to do that, go get, go get voice lessons. Okay. And, and so at first, of course, when somebody <clears throat> says that something like that to you, you get your back up like, what? Uh, you know, but then uh, I thought, well, that's really good advice, but it's sexist because I should also be being advised to go get guitar lessons. Because in those days, women were considered singers and men were considered the instrumentalists. And, you know, you, the women just didn't become the instrumentalists. So I took his advice to heart and I, I continued to train as a guitar player, but I also went and found a phenomenal voice coach. And I studied with her for seven years. She uh, used to tour the world as a, as a very famous opera singer. So yeah. I studied bel canto technique with her, which allowed me then to sing any kind of music I wanted, allowed me to be on the road as extensively as I was without damaging my voice and meant that I've been able, it's now, well, I started 55 years ago uh, singing and uh, it, I can still sing. <laughs> so, it, so it stood me in very good stead where a lot of people, if you don't use your voice properly, you can really damage it. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that training. Just like the Beatles with John Lennon, he <clears throat> did damage to his throat. Yeah, if you don't use the right technique, you will uh, damage your, your vocal cords. So, um, and also the, the, thing, the thing about singing for me with people is, is first of all, everyone can sing. You know, and most of us have been told that we can't. And, and one, of, one of the reasons I chose to dedicate half my career to working with children is I wanted to dispel that idea. Because when I was a kid, they told me, uh, you, you can't sing, don't sing. I was like in the little glee club and there's, okay, just mouth the words, Heather. And I know that my story is not unique at all. So after I began to learn, there's a technique to singing. I thought, well, you know, it's the same thing as handing somebody a guitar and say, here, play it. You know, of course you need someone to show you how. The same thing vocally, except what you need to do, which is the same thing as life really, is understand that your body is an instrument. And so not only do you have to train that instrument, but you have to take superb care of it. So when I was on the road all the time, you know, sometimes I'd be doing as many as uh, 15 shows a week, you know, wow. serious, serious hard work. And uh, um, the only thing that kept me going was that I, I really had to make sure I got all the rest I needed. Uh, at that time, I used to run because I'd have to keep my breathing in, in excellent shape for, for singing and, and watch my diet. Where did you um, learn how to write lyrics, poems, whatever? Well, now, um, 
an, another gift to me was uh, when I was in Regina, just starting in my career, I ran into Connie Calder, who was also from Regina and who has since gone on to become one of Canada's uh, most famous uh, singer songwriters. And in my opinion, would be among the top 10 Canadian songwriters. Um, and so when I, when I was starting in the business and she, she just sings her own material. She just writes, writes, writes. And she has just this treasure trove of great material. Mm -hmm. She also wrote kids songs for, for her nephews and nieces, but also as she became a mother, her own children. And she wasn't singing them anywhere. And uh, I started to get asked to do children's gigs. This was long before there really was a children's music industry. In, in fact, there wasn't a children's music industry, but the Manitoba Arts Council wanted to put, um, bring music into the schools for children, which I thought was a great idea. So they, they called me up and said, would you, uh, would you do music in the schools? Mm. And I thought, sure, how hard could it be? Ha, 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 ha. Didn't I learn? <laughs> so, so I learned a few great things. Uh, I learned that, uh, well, first of all, I had this treasure trove of great children's songs from Connie. So I went into the school really well armed. What I learned was it's a completely different skill set than singing to adults, which is wonderful. Uh, and the second thing about that skill set is that skill set will inform your skill set as an adult performer way more than vice versa. Because when you sing with children, um, if, if, <laughs> if they don't like what you're doing, they're gonna, yeah, you suck, you know? So there's, there's none of that, Pretend. you know, <laughs> no, no, no. The kids are gonna be right there honest with you. And uh, for me, working with children, the most important thing for me was my connection to them. I'm the kind of person that gets down on my knees around the child, so we're eye to eye. Um, and, and I would never ask a child to do something I wouldn't do myself. So when I get kids up on stage to do things with me and we're fooling around, I'm fooling around with them. You yeah. know. So we're actually having fun together. And, and then the whole audience gets engaged in that process. So it's not like I'm getting a kid to come up and do something silly. I'm going, want to come and play with me? And, and so we play together. And the other thing uh, about working with kids in that way is I would uh, always open every one of my uh, shows, and you'll see this when you get the DVD, with a little singing lesson for the kids to teach them about their body and where does the voice come from and how do you support it? Now, if you're going to be a trained singer, you wouldn't seriously train your voice until you got into your mid to later teens. But as a child, just to open up the idea in them, you can sing. That's number one. Number two, you've got to open up to sing, like open your mouth. You know, people tend to sing out of a tiny little mouth like this and they can't. Ah, that's me. You know? So open your mouth. Give me the big sounds. And the, and the more I would sing with kids and I would open up that energy and just be big about it then they jump on and they start giving it to you back. And then we have this energetic exchange that goes back and forth. It was just, ah, man, it was great. Do you teach them how to write lyrics or just to sing? Sometimes uh, the schools would bring me in to, to get the kids to write. And, and mostly I would just try to um, present them really easy ways to, to start writing. All you have to do is plant the seed. You can do this if you want. And so then away they go. So yeah, I did a little bit of that. I don't consider myself to be a great songwriter. I think I've written some good songs. I've written two or three really good songs and I've written a lot of songs that were, you know, lessons. <laughs> I learned a lot. So um, uh, if it come, you know, when it comes to songwriting, I can step in, but there are people uh, much better than I am at it. Well, you collaborate with others writing and yeah. composing. You write, do you do your own composing, your music for your... Yeah, sometimes uh, um, I have a wonderful guy, Laurie McKenzie. He and I have worked together for at least 25 years, I'd say. Mm. And um, my last children's album, Chickies on the Run, he and I collaborated on about half of the songs there. And I, and, I, and I actually feel like the writing I did on that album is some of the best writing I've ever done. Uh, and I would credit that with the collaborative process because uh, just bouncing the ideas off of each other. And in fact, he and I co-wrote a couple of adult songs together. Oh, that's great. So how- Yeah, and I, I, 
It's one thing I recommend to, uh, to my, my students is collaborate. Collaborate cr creatively, especially when you get sick of yourself or you get stuck. That's when you want to collaborate with somebody else. It's going to really stimulate your creative juices. With your um, children's songs, do you have them sing with you, along with you, when you do concerts, when you did do tours? Yeah, that was the big thing. Uh, I never sang to them. We always sang together. That was the <laughs> biggest thing. And, um, and here's an interesting thing about working with kids. When mm -hmm. I, uh, well, here's a couple of interesting things. When I first started singing to kids, so we're talking about mm, 1979, 80, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. um, I would go into a school and, and uh, we would be in a gymnasium. There'd be at least 500 kids on the gym floor sitting there. Yeah. It would be just my guitar and me. No microphones, no nothing. And you could hear a pin drop in there and the kids would all sing with me and it would be phenomenal. Over the years, I've seen the influence of too much television and too much uh, uh, um, social media and uh, uh, electronic devices. Because now, when I, uh, when I left my career singing with kids, if I didn't go in with at least one other musician, sometimes two, a sound system, and, and you had to be bam, 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 bam to keep their attention because their attention spans have been shortened to basically a nanosecond. And so in order to, to still be able to engage with them and reach them, you'd have to be that quick off the draw, which, which is a whole other thing because on the one hand, you're doing that. On the other hand, you're really trying to forge that, that true connection between human beings you know, it's because there's so much connection these days that it that is um, not one on one and, and very separate. So uh, the goal was for, for us to really be able to connect. I uh, I've heard some of the songs from your DVD Belly Button. Yeah, they're excellent. So what led you to uh, write these songs and the meaning of it? Well. Belly Button was my very first children's CD, and um, I'm trying to remember. I don't. That far I, away. <laughs> I don't think even one of those songs was mine. I didn't start writing children's songs until later. Those were all Connie songs, but that CD ended up being going gold uh, in Canada. And there's another one, Purple People Eater. Is that still yeah. new? That was my second one, and in fact, I when when things because I produced, you know, I remember eight tracks. Okay, <laughs> but I I produced um, those two albums, and then when they went to we went through cassette, of course, and then to CD, and when we went to disc, mm -hmm. uh, I put the first two together. So in fact, now you get those two albums in one. Oh, belly button, belly button, belly button and purple people leader. So it's eighteen tracks on one CD. Oh, my stars. I have to say that um, having toured the world for both adult and children's music, one of the things I discovered is that Canada actually um, produced the most, the, the, the deepest pool of excellent children's performers of any country in the world. And so, um, I, I, and I, those were my colleagues. So I got to work with, you know, I was on the Fred Penner show for years. Right. Um, I got to work with Al Simmons, who for me is one of, oh, the, one of the absolute geniuses. Uh, he's like a vaudeville come back to life. He's just wonderful. Um, Norman Foote from Vancouver, another genius children's performer. Um, uh, uh, you know, there, there's a group of really excellent children's musicians that came out of this country and we toured the world together. So that was a real privilege. And did you win any Juno awards or other type of awards for your songs? My children's, my children's music won a lot of awards, um, a lot of awards in the States too, the National Parenting, uh, National Association of Parenting Publications, I think it was. I won a couple of gold awards with them. Um, different different um, uh, or uh, agencies that would judge children's music. I did very well there, and in Canada, um, I was up for quite a few Junos. Um, now that you're retired, what are you doing for yourself? Well, wow. <laughs> that's a whole um, 
I'm, I, interestingly, it was easy for me to transition off of the stage. I always wondered because I was on stage, well, since I was 16, so like 55 mm. or six years or something. Um, but it was very easy to transition off the stage. I can't tell you how much I love not traveling. You know, I was gone from my beautiful home in the country for decades. And uh, over the time while I was touring, as you talked about in the beginning, I am a carpenter, I'm a third generation carpenter. And I built uh, my own passive solar home on my land here in Southern Manitoba. And I have an organic garden and a big greenhouse. And I have solar collectors for my, uh, electricity and and I use the sun to heat my house and so I, I live in a, in a paradise here in southern Manitoba on a, a half section of land but I also I would have to add that um, uh, since retiring and before I retired actually because it's been almost a dozen years now I teach a course called the art of managing your career which is ah. now moved in line and it's a, a 13 week university credit course that um, teaches artists how to uh, actually set up a business and survive as an artist. Mm. And my, my, my students are, are everything. There's visual artists, there's actors, there's dancers, there's musicians, there's writers, there's you name it. I could have used you years ago when I started out writing. There. I could have used me. That's why I teach the course. I wish somebody had sat me down and taught me everything. And, and I'm just really thankful for the, uh, the, the government of Manitoba here that, that funds the, the course so that people can, I, I think it's like 250 bucks or something to take this course. So they, yeah, so they support it. And, and I can't tell you what a difference it makes in people's careers to take this business course, which seems like a, a contraindication, but it's not because once you start taking yourself seriously, like if you're gonna run your arts practice as a business, you're gonna to start to take yourself seriously. When you start to take yourself seriously, you're gonna become a better artist because then you're gonna start looking at your skill set as an artist too. So not only are you gonna learn how to do your taxes and market yourself, you're gonna go, wow, if I'm gonna present myself to the world as my market, I better be really good. Anyways, I'm glad that you are helping kids become more creative. And this day and age with the technology and all that sort, it's kind of hard for kids to have creativity, imagination and all that. And that's why we need to- Exactly. Do exactly. So what would you like to say to my audience to uh, um, assure them that there is a good future ahead of us? <laughs> Okay, well, number one, I wanna to say to the parents, the best voice in the world, the most precious voice, singing voice in the world to a child is yours. And that's a truth. I don't care who you are, if you remember your parents singing to you, even if they weren't a good singer, it's like this precious gift that was given to you that as an adult, you really cherish. So please don't hesitate to sing to and with your kids. It's like that and, and also uh, creativity, bringing, uniting your family together. Music yeah. does. It's good for you. It's good for them. It's good for the breath. It's good for the body. It's good for the soul. It's good for the spirit. My Mary, when she was, when we were younger, she sang, she had a soprano voice. She sounded like an opera wow. to me anyways. And I've wow. always enjoyed music ever since. You. Case in point. Then Canadian singers started to get me interested in their type of music. So I started to go to folk and spiritual and all that sort of rock. So it was good, it was good. Now I'm doing children's and I'm really struggling with some of it, but I'm trying. I'm trying, yeah. Well, just do it, just do it. Uh, one of the things I always say to my students is whether you think you can or you can't, mm -hmm. you're right. And I want to, uh, I've always been pushing the envelope. Yeah, 
So, so whatever you believe, you can manifest. If you tell yourself you can't do it, you'll be right. You won't do it. If you tell yourself you can, you will. You know, you can't talk yourself out of it, especially when it's what you want to do. Yeah. Follow your passion, follow your heart. Yeah. As long as you don't hurt yourself or others, you know, enjoy your life. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for coming on to my show, uh, Heather. Uh, you've been an inspiration. And I'm looking forward to your uh, belly, <laughs> your DVD belly button. <laughs> okay, that's cute. Belly button, <laughs> belly button, oh, my belly button, oh, my belly button, I love you. Oh, my stars. I'll leave you with that. And we will see you again. Merci. All blessings. A video thing, a video thing. Mm. Anyways, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Patty Hunter, Patty's Page saying good afternoon and we'll see you next week. And thank you, Heather Fisher. Belly button, belly button, oh my belly button, oh my belly button, I love you. A belly button, belly button, oh my belly button, oh my belly button, I love you. Oh, how sad, lonely I would be When I lifted up my shirt I didn't see My belly button, belly button, oh my belly button Always for the rest of all our lives.